Welcome to the Grapner MZ32 radio tutorial series. Today we'll be talking about the MZ32 function menu. The function menu is where you expand your model settings after completing the basic settings made in the base menu. In the function menu, you will be setting up your flight phases, wing mixes, throttle or pitch curves, an optional snap roll or channel sequencer. As with the base menu, we will be following a structural sequence which should help you with completing your model setup in an easy manner. When working in the function menu, prior planning is important. Setting up a model can be at times complicated, especially when multiple flight modes are involved. If you know ahead which flight mode you will be using, you are in good shape, as this is where we will be starting. Adding a flight phase is done by tapping on the number of any visible flight phase. A list of preset flight phase names is shown, but you can enter your own or edit the ones on the list. You can create a total of 12 flight phases. In the control field, you will assign the control that will activate the active flight phase. To assign a switch or control, toggle the switch or move the control. For example, a stick or knob to register that control for activating the flight phase. You can also have different variations of input controls as follows. Fix will keep the flight phase active or not depending on its setting. This is a non-switching flight phase. Control switch, which is a condition that is active at a certain control position or offset. Logical switch, which is a control based on a logical state of two controls or switches. Combi switch, which is a control made of up to four different controls or switches that combined can activate the phase. Mixer switch activates a function when the mix is active. Sequencer is created in the sequencer menu and is activated when the channel sequencer is active. These input controls are created in the special menu which we will discuss in our next video. Please note that these input controls are available at any submenu where an input control can be assigned. This provides a very flexible and powerful way for controlling channels on the MZ32. The delay function determines how long it will take for a phase to become active. You can add for each phase its own unique voice as well as determine if the motor will be active at that phase or not. After setting up all your flight phases, you can go back to the base menu and assign each phase to a function. For example, in fast flight you may prefer a different type of crim settings or maybe you would like to have different dual rates and expos for each flight phase. Assigning a function to a phase is done by switching to the flight phase you would like to assign the function to and tap on the group icon which will change the function from global to the active flight phase. Back to the function menu, we will now explore the phase trim menu. The phase trim menu enables you to have different surface deflections for each flight phase. For example, Sailplane pilots can set their camber settings for each control surface, or jet pilots can add aileron up deflections during landing to reduce speed. The No Delay Channel menu overrides any delay set in a flight phase that may affect the operation of a certain channel or control. You can enable the No Delay Channel to be global or flight phase dependent. For example, if you have a landing phase with a delay of 2 seconds where you will be using Crow, you can have the flaps deployed in 2 seconds, but the ailerons will respond immediately to any control inputs. In the Wing Set menu, you will find mixers and rate settings for your aileron and flap controls. To access a function, you tap on the function field, for example, ailerons and flaps, which is followed by a visual change of the airplane model showing which control surfaces are affected by this mix. Tapping on the model will bring you into the Mix Detail menu. You can set the deflection rates for flaps and ailerons, as well as the trim resolution. For example, setting rate A and rate B to 50 
will deflect the flaps at 50% when the ailerons are deflected at 100%. The trim field value will determine how sensitive the trim is going to be with each trim step. Set at 50, it will only provide half of the trim travel. Tapping on the group or action icon will set the mix from global to phase dependent while the action icon activates the mix. The control field allows you to assign an input control to activate or deactivate the mix. Note the different control types available to you as described earlier in the phase set menu. In the wingtail menu, you will find a range of mixes that control surface deflections between the aileron, elevator, and rudder. Their operation is identical to the wing set menu with the difference that the elevator aileron and flat mixes allow you to store an offset of your elevator stick position. To store the elevator stick position, move the elevator to the desired position and press the blue store field. The offset value will then determine at which point the aileron or flap will deflect when the elevator is moved to the offset point. You can assign a separate control to turn the offset on or off during flight. The differential menu enables setting the differential control for each of your wing control surfaces. Differential control can be global or phase dependent. Differential can be used to counter adverse yaw when the airplane is in a bank turn. The air brake menu is where we set our flight control surfaces to create drag to reduce the airplane's airspeed. Sailplane pilots will use this menu to set up their crow or butterfly during the landing phase. The air brake menu is inactive when the motor option is checked in the phase menu. The amount of positive or negative deflection is set in the crow column depending on your model requirements. The differential reduction field determines how much differential should be reduced during the phase when the air brake is active. Reducing differential may improve overall controllability during turn corrections at lower speed. Correcting attitude pitch changes for when the mix is active can be done in the brake elevator menu. When tapping on the icon, a flat curve menu will show, which can be changed to deflect the elevator to a certain position depending on the brake control position. The other button allows you to select a curve type, in this case a flat curve for offset changes, or a multi-point curve. The spline icon will determine the curve type transition. The value button is where you set the values for your curve depending on your model requirements. If you selected a multi-point curve, you can add additional curve points after positioning the brake cursor along the curve line and press the plus icon. The basic button has an option called Overlay Channel that allows you to visually overlay another channel over the current channel to review its position in relation to another channel. The Snap Roll menu lets you preset four different snap rolls that are activated during flight with a switch. To select the type of snap, tap on any of the function buttons and watch the icon detail to confirm the type of snap you want. Tap on the icon to view the Snap Detail menu. In this menu, you will set the desired rates as well as delay for each control surface to make the snap perform smoother. Snap rolls are phase dependent, so you can experiment with different settings to eventually make a snap look as good as can be. The Throttle Curve menu allows you to create a throttle behavior that is not completely linear, which may be needed for certain situations. For example, high-powered sailplanes may require a ramp before the full throttle position is reached. Setting a throttle curve starts by selecting a curve and spline type and then making changes in the value fields. The default throttle curve point comes with seven points, but you can add more points depending on your needs. To change a point, 
move the throttle cursor over a point and use the X or Y arrow keys to change the point values. You can also tap on the orange guide tabs on the side of the curve quadrant to roughly move the point to a desired position and fine-tune the values with the arrow keys. You can have different throttle curves for each flight phase. The MZ-32 has in total 16 available free mixers where each can have its own curve and master input type. To add a new mix, tap on the plus icon. You can name the mix or change its order in the mixer's menu. The From field provides the option to use either another channel in the mix or a control, which can be a switch or any of the other available input control methods. The default is channel, and by tapping on the CH field, you can change it to switch and select an input control. Tapping on the Detail icon will show you the Mix Detail menu. Like most curved mix menus, on the MZ32, the Free Mixers menu has identical control settings. Tapping on the other field lets you set the mix as global or phase dependent, activate the mix and assign a control to turn the mix on or off, and curve and spline type. When these have been set, you can set the mix values, curve points, and offset in the value fields. In the basic field, you can change the mix channels as well as how the trims will function when the mix is active. There are four link types to choose from. None, link, link after mix, and link after mix with trim. The dual mixer menu mixes two channels with another. It is basically a cross mixer, like what you would see in a V-tail setup. In the diff field, you can change the differentiation value between the two outputs. The Mix Only Channel menu allows you to designate a channel that is only used for controlling the mix, but without giving up the channel. For example, if you have set a control on channel 8, which is used as the master for controlling a mix, Enabling the Mix Only field will use only the control assigned to channel 8 without providing channel output signal on CH8, therefore freeing the channel for other functions. The Channel Sequencer allows you to control up to three channel outputs for functions such as opening and closing multiple gear doors and to control your landing gear. The uses for the channel sequencer are only limited by your imagination. After assigning the channels to each of the sequencer outputs, you can start setting the time for each sequence to be active, as well as how much output it should provide within the specified time. You can assign the same or separate control to activate the sequencer. The sequencer can also be used to activate a flight phase, depending on any of the three available output conditions. For example, you can have the landing phase become only active after the landing gear is down or gear doors open. The function menu has much to offer to further enhance the way your models are set up. The function menu will change depending on the type of model you created in the base menu. For example, a helicopter model will show the function menu with throttle and pitch curve settings, while multi-rotor, cars, and boats will have menus that provide the needed functions that provide the best use for that model type. In the next video, we will describe the special menu, where some of the more advanced features like telemetry notifications and setting up controls are discussed. This concludes the function menu tutorial. Thank you for watching. And for more videos, visit us online.